Greetings, this is Mr. Solomon with another edition of Minecraft EDU for Schools here at Village East Elementary. Today's activity involves students creating a number zoo. It's a variation on the number zoo, specifically for third grade. This could actually be adapted for second or fourth, depending on the ability level and comfort level with Minecraft with your students. So we're developing numeracy. We always talk about technology standards from NETS, National Education Technology Standards for Students. Students will be creative and innovative. They'll collaborate and communicate, and they'll also learn how to be digital citizens by working together. We talk about math standards, how prepared graduates understand the structure and properties of our number system, and then the relevance. Accurate use of measurement tools allows people to create projects around their home or community, such as flower beds for a garden, which is exactly what they'll be doing in Minecraft. Fencing for a yard, a variation with area and perimeter. Wallpaper for a room and frames for a picture. We talk about what numbers are and how they can be represented. We talk about a circle map. This is a thinking map that we used to do where students would represent a number in as many different ways. And then we always review the rules of Minecraft before we start. Number two and number five are the most important. So we've established a system here where students will always use their first name and the number where they're sitting at the computer lab. We have 25 machines. This helps me support students that need help because I'll always know who that student is and where they're located in the game. And we also talk about number five, no griefing, work together, only use the tools necessary for this activity. So even though build mode is turned on and students have uh, full inventory, we talked about no weapons, no potions, no armor, nothing that uh, is unrelated or doesn't relate to the task, which is showing numbers. We also go over the controls briefly on how to walk, just in case anybody needs some help. So as we get into the game, you'll see this is the large workspace with teleports that I've adapted. I've added some border blocks here, so students will only have 16 areas because they're working in groups of two. So this can accommodate up to 32 students. So if I walk up to an area and I right click with an empty hand, you'll see that the only thing visible to students would be station 10 and that's what they will see. I'm in teacher mode right now. So as we teleport in you'll see you come to a, a long hallway. This door cannot be broken by students. We have build disallow blocks underneath all of this grass so you can only build where there are green circles. So there's seven areas that students will work with and if you look at assignments this shows what they have to do. So in area one, they'll do two addition problems. Students can see this assignment list too. Area two, they'll write two multiplication problems. Area three, they build an array two different ways. Area four, planting sunflowers. Area five, they're going to build a house. It's four by four and then three windows on each side. Area six, they build the number out of stone blocks. And area seven, they will answer the story problem. So as we walk around here, we can take a look and see what students have done. Looks like this one is accurate. Here's our two multiplication problems. Some interesting arrays. There's our flower bed of sunflowers. Looks like they still need to finish three windows on a side. And if we walk to the next area, you can see the state of completion that everybody is in. So this group here built the number 12 out of blocks. It looks good. Here's area 7. So if you right click on the signs, this story problem is taken straight from Bridges Math, talking about stamps that cost 4 cents each. And then if you represent them with number blocks, the students put in the answer, which is correct, of 48. Students had finished all six areas, were then asked to construct a house that is 12 by 12, and I built that for them. I cleared out the area as they were working and made sure I put build allow blocks 12 by 12, and then they had to accurately place a sign that says what the area and perimeter is of these houses. So if we duck in here, you can see that this one doesn't quite have area and perimeter right. I'll have to talk to that group. But if we go to some other groups that have houses built, I'm going to fly over here. This is a good example. So I told them they had to put a sign on the door 
that shows what the area and the perimeter is. If I put 12 blocks on each side, the perimeter is 48, and then they calculated the area, and then that gives them permission to build a house. And then everything in their house, I talk to them, should be related to 12. So 12 lights, 12 chairs, 12 picture frames, whatever they're placing in their house should be related to the number. So you can see some are still working on their construction of the number. This was a bit of a problem solving challenge because flying is turned off in this activity. So students had to figure out how to build steps to get up to build blocks that are five high. So another little problem solving exercise. And then you can see they have their sign here. Let me spin around. They still have to write on their sign. So we'll check back when students are in the room. Right now they're still in their classrooms, but when they come back we'll do another recording because I always like to record when students are actually playing the game so you can see what they're working on and you can hear the buzz in the room. So we'll check back in a few minutes. Okay, students are now in the room and so we've got an example of uh, students that are finished. So I'm going to clear out an area now that they can build a 12 by 12 house. So when you press M and you select fill and clear, and you also select build mode, okay, both of these are checked, then I can start helping them construct their space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then one, two, three, three, whoops, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12. And then with fill in clear, I can just right click on one spot with an empty hand. Got to make sure your hand's empty. And then right click on the other spot. And it should fill all of them in. Right click once, right click twice. So there's my 12 by 12. Now I'm going to clear out the build disallow blocks by right clicking. And I'm going to select build allow. Right click on one corner. Right click on the other, turn off filling clear, it's easy to forget that, and then mistakes can be made, and then here is where their door is going to be. So now these girls have a 12 by 12 space in which to work. As we check on our other houses, you can see the students are getting creative, adding a chimney with smoke. This is Isaac, so he's got an accurate sign, and you can see he's got lots of things inside of his house. And if I look inside of his chest, I see books. So I'm going to grab one of these books and take a look at it. So if I right click, I can see that he doesn't have anything written, but some of these books he wrote some word problems. So he's got 12 torches, he's got 12 signs, he's got 12 beds. So a good example of how a student can extend this activity to learn more about how the number 12 can be represented. We can look at some other houses here too. So I asked these guys to include a sign. I need to see your sign. Okay, so go ahead and put that one up. Brandon, go ahead and put up a sign. Show me how you put up a sign. Put up a sign. It has to be a sign that shows area and perimeter. So I'm going to check back on those guys. So sometimes it's easy to get off track, as you can see. They're spending so much time building the house, they're forgetting what I'm expecting, which is a sign that shows area and perimeter. So if we look in here, here's 12 beds. Looks like they're still working on the upstairs. You can see what Chad's doing. So then they have a chance to be creative. I don't know what you guys are doing with this giant roof, but we're going to fix that. So I can go in and tell them I'm going to help keep them focused on what they need to do, which is building a sign. So a good example of what students still need to work on. That's a quick assessment, so I can tell whether they understand multiplication or not. And you can see kids are having fun with building a 12 by 12 house with an area of 144. It's a good example. They've got a rooftop flower bed. So they're really taking this and running with it. I like seeing all the different ideas. Thanks for watching.